using braces will make you weaker. How's that for a myth about EDS and HSD? And by braces, I mean garments, supportive garments or accessories that can help support our joints. And there is a myth out there or a mis maybe a misunderstanding that using these bracing techniques and garments um, can actually make us weaker. And um, that is just not true. And I think that causes a lot of fear in the um, EDS population, the HSD population, that, you know, they feel they don't want to use these things that can be really, really helpful, um, but they're worried that it's going to make them weaker. Um, so it's not true. Um, you know, these things can be super helpful in terms of proprioceptive awareness, in terms of pain control, because they can help hold you in a proper alignment. So they can help with your daily activities. Okay, so, you know, don't be fearful about trying out some of these things. Um, the same goes for orthotics. You know, people are fearful. There's this misunderstanding that orthotics or ankle braces, you know, um, the Ritchie braces are, are bad for us because they're going to make our feet and our ankles weaker. Again, just not correct. They will give you support. They will enable you to be able to do more, to walk more, to get out, to experience more. Um, you know, so they're not something to be fearful about. Some people find that wearing these um, things, these, uh, these bracings or these orthotics can help get them out of pain. You know, pain, um, because muscles start to work in ways they probably haven't been working before, um, their pain can really, really be improved. So I don't want to discourage anyone from using these sort of supportive garments and, um, you know, accessories. Um, the caveat to that is, of course, that you don't want to rely on them 100%. By that, I mean, even if you've got orthotics, even if you're wearing an ankle brace, even if you're wearing some other kind of brace, we still want to be doing movement. We still want to be doing exercise to help um, the overall conditioning of the body. OK, so we don't want to just rely on that and think, well, I don't have to do anything now because I'm, I'm, I've am I'm, i got this brace. You do still want to be doing your exercises because, first of all, the body loves to move. It's a fantastic thing, um, however small, however little that is. Um, and so we want to build muscle tone. We want to build that tonality, that postural tone. We want to build that stability around the joints. Um, and some people use these um, items when they are actually exercising because it can help them feel things that normally they um, can't feel. So it's something to consider. Again, I think it's more of a misunderstanding, um, you know, and a fear out there that it's a bad thing to do. And it absolutely isn't a bad thing to do. Um, and while we're talking about feet and orthotics, I just want to mention the feet. As you know, if you've watched any of my videos, the feet are hugely important to the organisation of the whole structure. And I've got a live video on here where we go delve deep into the mechanics of the feet and why the feet are so important to address when you've got hypermobility. Um, and the thing I just wanted to cover is, you know, there is a myth. That I don't think this is just in the hypermobile world, but there is a myth that pronation is a bad thing, okay? Pronation of the feet is a bad thing. Um, and so pronation is when the foot kind of flattens and lengthens, and it's a sort of a three-dimensional action that takes place um, in the foot. Um, but pronation is absolutely an essential part of gait. If your feet aren't pronating, it means that the tissues are not lengthening. And if they're not lengthening, then they can't contract again into supination. OK, so we need pronation of our feet. So um, if someone tells you, you know, don't pronate your feet, that's that's not correct. You need to pronate your feet. Um, with hypermobility, I don't tend to see pronation, actually. What you tend to see is not a pronated foot, but a structure that has just sort of slid inwards. The bony um, 
landmarks have kind of slid for most people obviously we do have hypermobile people who have high arches as well i'm not dismissing that but you know 90 percent of the people i see have this sort of structure that slid inwards okay so it's not pronated it's just gravitational pull and laxity drawing everything into the middle okay so what i do is teach people how to pronate properly and how to supinate their feet so that the feet actually start working um, and then mobility can improve um, pain can in, um, improve okay because obviously the action of the feet is hugely going to impact the, the knee joint and the hip joint okay so we never look at things in isolation but addressing what goes on at the foot and how it interacts with the ground is super super important okay so pronation is not a bad thing it's a necessary thing but we need to probably learn how to do that properly um, and um, yeah lots and lots of exercises on here to help with understanding the mechanics of the feet and how to help your feet pronate and supinate so i hope that was helpful please let me know in the comments below and i'll see you next time for another myth misconception or misunderstanding